Hello everyone on YouTube, I am Mono Yasha from Dream Vision Creations and thank you so much for joining me on yet again another tutorial on how to work with your skull masks. This time we're going to actually start working on the hood of your mask, this one being that we have got ears on it. You don't have to use ears, um, but this is just an additional step that I want to add in because it's a tad more difficult to do. We're going to first start out with doing the actual duct tape pattern to the hood. So this is going to be basically your, your layout of how your fabric is going to look on the skull itself. Now you're not limited to just following the edge of the skull. You can actually have the fur come on top of the skull here in all different methods. I've had skulls that have fur coming down here, this entire area is furred over. I've had other ones where it kind of semi-circles right here on the top. I've had ones where it's mostly all open and then it comes down these little cracks and goes underneath the jaw all the way to the very central front of the chin area. All this area is covered in fur. So there's a lot of different options for you. You also don't have to do things in fur. You can also do it in kind of scaly um, upholstery type fabric. You can do it in fleece. You can do it in minky fabric. Uh, it's called smooth minky. Um, you can do it in vinyl. Um, you can even, if you want to, not even worry about doing a hood, and you could just essentially wear a hoodie with this type of mask or a Reaper costume, and that'll work too. But again, this is just an option if you want to go a little bit more into it and make it look like its flesh is kind of peeling off. You guys, another thing you can do, you can add gore effects like silicone. But we'll get into that later. I'm not going to go too much into the gore aspect of this. This is going to be more sticking with just the fabrics. So I'll just show you how I lay out my, my tape pattern um, and then we'll essentially go from there. There might be a little bit of a gap between this video and my next one I gotta do because I don't have enough time to actually do the, the first section of this. I can only show you how to do the tape pattern and then you'll have to go from there as far as figuring out how what furs you want to use and how many different colors you want to go with, if there's a very specific pattern. Um, I'll probably do another tutorial down the line of actually showing how to fur a hood with just a single color so it's got something for you to start out with essentially. Because with this pattern I'll be doing at least three colors to it and I think that'd be a little, little complicated to start out at first. But anyways, we'll get right to it. i um, going to need materials. So cling wrap. Either cling wrap or you can use grocery bags. Either one's fine. Uh, I prefer cling wrap because it actually does stick semi to the plastic and makes it a lot easier to either tape it in places or use pins to hold it in place, which is one of the next things we get onto. Just some straight pins, sewing pins. They don't have to be heavy duty, they can be regular duty. Um, this is pretty much just to help you pin down the cling wrap, especially uh, when you get towards the back of the mannequin. Yet again, I'm using a Monster Makers uh, mannequin base here, it has built in ears and stuff in it. It really helps for building up these patterns so that way you know you've got a human shape to work off of. Uh, if you don't have access to that, you can actually make yourself a duct tape dummy head. It's a little bit more complicated. I don't have a tutorial or anything for it for now, but you can also get one of those foam mannequin heads and kind of measure your head and actually tie it up to fit too. Build a neck, build shoulders onto it. That's something you can actually make a duct tape dummy of, your uh, neck and your shoulders, and attach that foam head to it. And you'll have something very similar to this. Now the next things you need is, of course, duct tape. You'll need a lot of this. And you can see I already pre-laid out a whole bunch of tape that I just ripped off and then put on the table. It makes it a lot easier to have something uh, already pre-done so you just rip them and put it on there because sometimes the cling wrap can be a little bit of a pain in the butt on you when you're trying to put it down. You'll need a pair of scissors in order to trim off the access material. We're only going to be doing a pattern for half of the head because it will be flipped over to the other half for, you know, symmetrical pattern. And marker. You can use a black marker, you can use a red one, blue one, doesn't really matter the color. Um, it makes it easier for you. You can also use multiple colors. You can do black just to do your basic, like, okay, this is half of the head markings. This is separating out this color to this color. And then if you want to, you can use different colors for different colors of fur. And it might be easier for you to actually plan it out that way. I just use black for the whole thing because I label all the individual pieces, so it's not a big deal. So really, you only need those like five items in order to do this besides your skull and your mannequin base. I am actually going to be building up the neck on this one. That's why there's plastic bags already here. I want to make it look more feral. I want to hide that human curvature that we have in the back of our heads to our neck area and give it more of that filled out neck look. 
That way also I can make this as a uh, pull over your head hood. It won't have a zipper on it, so that way I can also make sure that the neck diameter is going to be adequate for the sides of the head so the person can easily slip it on without worrying about it being too small. Now I did a tutorial just before this one of how to make your Foss shape ears because this right here is the 600 grade uh, Foss shape from Wonderflex Materials. Um, I also went ahead and added some one inch foam to the back of the ears and then I just kind of trimmed it in the shape just to give it a little bit more of that kind of bold shape to the ear and make it look bigger, make it look deeper and overall fills out the ear a bit better than just having the regular uh, just plain Foss shape. But I just essentially used my original pattern and created that shape as you see right here this illuminating through and then I just flipped over the pattern and duplicated it on the other side and trimmed them out, hot glued them on. It's pretty simple. Anyways, we'll get right down to it. Um, I actually held on to my original pattern for the ears because this will make it so much easier for taping up the ears themselves because I don't need the pattern anymore. If you do plan to reuse your pattern, then just trace it onto another piece of construction paper and use that for your template. This small piece of pin came loose. So I'm going to go ahead and use this in order to do the inner side of the ear just because it would be a lot easier that way. Put my pins up. This right here is one of those times you, it's good to use the pins. I'm just going to put it right here in the middle just to hold it in place. And you see it's almost the exact same shape of the ear. A little off in some places, so I can actually go and trim that and make it more the size. You don't want it sticking out. Also, whenever you're using a heat gun on the, the Foss shape ears, they will shrink a tad, so just keep that in mind whenever you're creating your ear pattern. I'm actually going to pin this in a couple more places just because it's wiggling all over the place. Just be careful that when you are pinning that you're not pinning all the way through because you don't want to accidentally prick yourself. decided exactly how I want to do this section yet, or the skull. I've done a couple different ways at this point with my skull creatures. So I think I actually want to keep more of the skull exposed this time. I'm going to take one little piece here.
I'm just using a very light bit on the skull because I don't want to accidentally possibly peel up any of the teeth. Okay, I'm going to take a couple pieces of this tape just to tape it to the ears. Get it from sliding around. Okay, so I have a very basic layout here of the plastic. I'm going to go ahead and continue with adding plastic down the back here. lay a piece of tape up here just to hold it in place just to make sure that that doesn't come apart pretty much just continuing along the skull Kind of smushing down the cling wrap.
Like I said, just little tiny pieces of tape. Just to hold the cling wrap in place on your skull. Just very gently on there. Even though I have this sealed, there's still a possibility if I've got too much sticky tape on there, it's going to peel the tape off. Well, the tape's going to peel the paint off, not, not the other way around. Derp -derp. When I choose my duct tape, I try to choose tape that's not too sticky. That's why I like the 3M duct tape. Okay, I've got most of the hood cling wrap now. Now I can actually start taping it down. I'm going to leave the ears for last because they're a little bit tricky to do. I'm going to pull a little bit of tape here to hold this one little piece. Yep. Yeah. 